Morning, everyone. Morning. Let me get this party started. Open wide from the depths, from the heights, I will bring a sacrifice. With these hands, with dead high, hear my song, hear my cry, I will bring a sacrifice. Yeah. 
Good morning. Good morning. Is there a better day to worship outside than today? I mean, you'd think we ordered it, right? Somebody did. Somebody did. But welcome this morning as we gather together as Riverside Church Association to worship, to praise God, to enjoy creation and the fellowship of each other. So we're just so glad that each one of you could join us today. And thanks for Carson UMC and Presbyterians for getting this together. We have Presbyterians were part of that, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We're all part of it, right? Anyway, so uh, remember that coming up July 2nd, we will be in Oakland at the um, at the gazebo. And we have a group coming in from Tennessee. Yes? Is it, I can't remember if they're in Kentucky or Tennessee because they moved, but I think they're in Tennessee. And they will have gospel music, so like bluegrass gospel, um, acoustic and he's a luthier, so he makes all their instruments. And it's just, it's a really great show. And they will be there for worship that day to um, to provide us with testimony and music. So um, we hope to have you there. And then in Macedonia in August, uh, to finish up uh, Doni Days, we will be at worship there on the 20th in the morning uh, with a potluck after that. So there will be a fundraiser after the one on the second, but we hope everybody can come and join, bring your friends, bring your chairs, and just enjoy creation as we worship. So let us begin in an attitude of worship. My kids, or my kids, my people are going to say, this isn't worship if we don't do this. So I need everybody to take a deep breath in and let it all out. We're going to bring in all this essence of peace and love and worship of God and bring, breathe that in and just hold it there and then release that breath and push out all the things that distract us from worship. Even after the resurrection, when the disciples were weighed down with worry, Jesus assured them that they were not alone. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Even after the resurrection, when the disciples were burdened by their fears, Jesus calmed their troubled hearts. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Even after the resurrection, when we struggle with our faith, Jesus blesses us with comfort and with help. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Especially after the resurrection, when our souls are dry and barren, the Holy Spirit blows through our lives, bringing with us new life. Alleluia. Can you join me in that? Alleluia. Let us pray. Amazing God, you call us today, just as you called the disciples on the day of Pentecost. You challenge and support us, revealing the brokenness of our communities. Give us the peace that our world needs. You point us to the pain of the cross and then remind us of the joy of the resurrection. Transform us, O oh God, through the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us breathe deeply of the breath of life. Blow through our worship and change our lives forever. Amen. Hopefully here's a song most people know here in the worship. Here I am to bow down, here I am to say 
the wind itself, you can feel it today, right, can remind you of God. Uh, but the second lesson is that that God's, God's spirit can help you get unstuck, right? If you pray, if you um, uh, go to worship and do those things, uh, God will help you get unstuck. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So everybody, we're going to repeat after me as we pray together. So repeat after me. Dear God. Dear, Dear God. God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for Pentecost. Thank you for Pentecost. Thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you.
And after I graduated from college, I moved to Iowa City. And in I uh, Coralville, there's a place called West Music Company. And it's a retail music store, and they have locations in eastern Iowa. But in Coralville, there's a warehouse. There's a huge warehouse, and um, there's a national side to it. They, they have a national catalog that they send out to music educators all over the country. And so that's uh, the department uh, that I worked in, was the kind of the national customer service and national sales for elementary uh, music teachers all over the country. So I worked in an office for about 10 years um, in Coralville. I worked in an office. If you know anything about working in an office, um, there was a lot of different characters, a lot of different people. It was a pretty diverse group of people. Uh, mostly musicians, like myself. Uh, I worked with people who had PhDs in music, but what do you do with a PhD in music, right? Uh, you need a teacher, you work in a music company. So. Um, Lots of different people from all over the country uh, kind of converge on that university town in Iowa City. But we were together there eight to ten hours a week, 40 hours a week. So we spent a lot of time together in kind of close quarters, right? And after spending that much time together, it's almost like we became a small family with its own history and culture that grew and it changed over years. As you can imagine, there's people who bickered and disagreed. There were fun times. We were, like I said, we're all musicians, so we all played music together. Uh, there were holiday parties and that sort of thing. And in a bigger sense, we shared life together. For instance, uh, we had a, a, a baby shower for Maggie when Maggie was born in Nehemiah too, and a, a wedding shower and those sort of things. In the office, uh, we got to share those big life moments uh, with one another. So when I was working there, the show that was really popular that uh, I felt I was living a real-life version of was The Office. Have you ever seen that show, The Office? You, I've learned that you either love or you hate that show, right? Uh, my wife just absolutely hates it. But it was, uh, it was pretty true to life. So it's an exaggerated uh, version of what working in an office is really like, including the humor and the awkwardness and the office politics, uh, this diverse group of people that's kind of dysfunctional, but the, in the end, uh, full of camaraderie and support from one another as well. And I think that TV show re uh, resonated with so many people because it's pretty relatable. In a bigger sense, anytime you get a group of people together, uh, funny things uh, happen. Unexpected things, unpredictable things can happen, including conflict and people butting heads. Uh, good times and bad things and everything in between, right? That's the, night, the nature of life, of being uh, in a diverse group of people who are so much different from one another. It's a gift, but also it causes some uh, conflict as well. Uh, as you can imagine, similar dynamics exist in the church as well. Uh, you can look around the room here, or the, the pavilion, and the diversity that's found in a church community can be even more broad and multifaceted. And it reflects the unique individualness of each one of us gathered here. And we come together to worship, to share our faith, and to build a sense of belonging and community. Now, sometimes it's uh, hard to recognize, but we are very different people that are gathered here today. We have different ideas about uh, how ch what church is, what church should look like. Uh, just look at how many denominations are represented here in the world. Look at how many denominations there are. In the end, uh, Christians are a very different people, a very different idea. I, I grew up in the ELCA, the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America. So even I have different ideas, perhaps, of, and, and expectations of what church should be. And it's not necessarily the same as everybody else. So as I told the kids, as we read about today's Pentecost, and uh, today, the event of Pentecost is described in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, with, uh, it's described as the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples of Jesus Christ. But, as uh, Mike read, you can hear those weird names in there, uh, one of the notable aspects of Pentecost is the diversity of the people that were gathered there. There were people from all over that area of the world that spoke all different kinds of languages and had all different kinds of cultures and, and that sort of thing. But before I get to that aspect of Pentecost, I want to back up and talk about Pentecost more generally. What is Pentecost and why do we celebrate it? So Pentecost is the last of a series of kind of big church holidays 
uh, that follow the chronology of Christ's uh, death and resurrection. So rewind the clock, go all the way back to February, if you can believe that, February, when it's still snow on the ground and all that. Ash Wednesday is when we began this journey. Ash Wednesday, we, then we start this, the, the beginning of Lent. We journey through Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Week, Easter Sunday. Last week at uh, my churches, we observed Ascension Sunday, which happens 40 days after, Christ, after Easter, when Jesus ascends into heaven. And today is Penta. You can guess uh, the prefix Penta means 50. So 50 days after Easter, um, the last Sunday before the most exciting time of the year, ordinary time. <laughs> uh, so this is the culmination of quite a, quite a ways back in the church calendar. And as I read through those stories again, the one thing that stood out to me was uh, time and time and again, Jesus makes promises. And Jesus makes predictions about how all these events are going to unfold. Every step of the way, Jesus makes promises and predictions about how these days were going to go. And they kept coming true. Now, for quite a while, he'd been telling his disciples that they would must go to Jerusalem, and he would be arrested, and he would be put to death. So in Matthew and Mark, it says, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him, and after three days he will arrive. And both of those things came true, right? Now, even though they didn't recognize him at first, Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene. He appeared to disciples on the road to Emmaus. And so the witnesses of Jesus became uh, promises. There was witnesses that as they became true. So in the wake of his death and resurrection, Jesus also predicts, or he promises, however you want to phrase that, that the temple, the center of the Jewish life, the temple, would be destroyed. That his closest followers would encounter their own persecution and arrest and uh, uh, execution. And again, all of those things came true. Even after Jesus dies, the temple, the Romans come in and destroy, burn down the temple, just like Jesus said what happened. Again, in the book of Acts, we read how the disciples are arrested and, uh, for instance, the apostle Stephen is stoned to death. So all of these things are coming true, just like Jesus said they would. But throughout the good times, the bad times, the hope and all the uncertainty, and through all of these events, Jesus also makes another promise, which is that he will never leave them. He will always be present. Uh, he promises in his words that an advocate will come. That's the word that he uses, the advocate, to describe the Holy Spirit. Um, the Holy Spirit would descend upon their community to empower them to do ministry. So I'm going to go through this briefly. Um, these are all promises that Jesus tells us about the Holy Spirit, how we will experience the Holy Spirit in our lives, how those first disciples were. So that the Holy Spirit is a comforter and an advocate. In the Gospel of John, he promises that after his departure, he would send the Holy Spirit to be with his disciples to provide comfort, guidance, and support. The Holy Spirit is also an indwelling presence. So the, the, the Holy Spirit is within all of us as believers of Christ. He says, the spirit of truth dwells with you and will be in you. All right, so the Holy Spirit teaches and helps us to remember. Jesus, in his own words, said, the Holy Spirit will teach you all the things and bring you to remembrance of everything that I've said to you. So the Holy Spirit serves as a guide and it kind of illuminates our Christian path. The Holy Spirit empowers people. He told his disciples they would receive power from the Holy Spirit to be his witnesses in the world, to boldly proclaim the message of Jesus, and to demonstrate his love and power in other people's lives. And lastly, uh, the book of Galatians talks about the fruits and the gifts of the Spirit. John, Jesus promises that the Holy Spirit includes a production of spiritual gifts. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, I lost track. Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, these are the natural sort of things that will, people will experience from us. Those are all in Jesus' words, all promises that Jesus makes about the Holy Spirit. So John the Baptist, way back in the beginning of the Gospel, says, There's one more powerful than I that is coming. I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. And I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit, 
These are the promises. These are the things we can expect to experience. So I'm going to go back um, to where I started, the, the diversity um, of the group of people who were gathered at Pentecost. We see, uh, we read about how the Holy Spirit is kind of the glue, the power that unites all of those different people together under a common purpose, a common objective. Now, I'm in the United Methodist Church, so in the United Methodist Church, um, our mission is stated as to make disciples of Jesus Christ to train for the transformation of the world. So that's the common purpose, the common objective that people were drawn together, to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Isaiah 61 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners. Again, this is the common purpose, the common objective for which all of those people were drawn together. And those are the purposes of the church. That's why we gather together as well, to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. That is the vision that was left by Jesus for the ministry of his church. And he leaves us with that promise that the Holy Spirit would unite all of these different people under that same common purpose. All right, so you remember the uh, story of the Tower of Babel, going way back in your Sunday school memories. It happens in Genesis chapter 11. Um, so these, again, a, a group of people get together with, again, a single purpose to build a tower into the heavens. You remember that story? But the, the purpose of building a tower into the heavens wasn't uh, for the sake of God. In their words, it was, quote, to make a name for ourselves. It was a, kind of a self-centered, self-glorifying motivation or purpose. So as a result, if you remember the story, what God does is he confuses their language. <laughs> he scatters them all over the face of the earth. Now, as you're reminded of that story, it should remind you of something else, because it's literally the opposite of what happens at Pentecost. So at Pentecost, instead of scattering people apart, the Holy Spirit draws people together. Not for the purpose of self-glorification, but for the glorification of God. At Pentecost, there's all of these diverse group, different people, drawn together for a universal, uh, singular purpose, which is to build heaven on earth. And such was the beginning of the church, and our inauguration as the disciples of Christ. So at our best, when I worked at West Music, uh, it could be an incredibly fulfilling job. It wasn't always a fulfilling job. Any job is, you know, has its moments. But because of the different people that we were, we came together, we worked in that place uh, for a shared love of music. Music was the thing that kind of drew us all together, right? It wasn't the money. I didn't make, uh, I don't embarrass you to tell you how much I made there. Uh, it wasn't the prestige or anything else, but it was instead at our best, again, at our best, it was the desire to spread the love of music, especially um, to children in elementary schools and to future generations. So I'd be remiss to mention, uh, as we're gathered here today on this weekend, uh, it's Pentecost, but it's also a day to honor to celebrate Memorial Day. So Memorial Day celebrates our constitutional rights and honors the sacrifices of those who fought to protect them. It's a time to remember the brave men and women who gave their life in defense of those freedoms. And their sacrifice embodies the values enshrined in our Constitution, such as the, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yes? Memorial Day serves as a reminder that these rights are not guaranteed, but preserved through the dedication and the selflessness of those who choose to serve in that capacity. It's a solemn occasion to reflect on the importance of our constitutional rights and all the responsibilities that they entail. Now, we know, take a look around for one second, we know that the United States is an incredibly diverse mix of group of people, right? 
They call it a melting pot. The America is the vibrant melting pot where all these diverse cultures and backgrounds come together to form this rich and dynamic society that we all love. And obviously, if you take any look around, we do not agree about everything, right? Including precise definitions and interpretations of how those constitutional rights are lived out on a daily basis. But at our best, as a country, at our best, we come together with a single purpose, to protect, to defend, to advocate, to preserve those rights that we hold so dear, especially for future generations. At our best, the church is empowered by the Holy Spirit to come together for Jesus, for a single purpose, to set aside, set aside all of our pride and self glorification for the sake of Christ, for Christ's kingdom. That Jesus draws us all together to make disciples of Jesus Christ, to transform this world. Today we are a diverse group of people, not just people gathered here, but few people in the, the broader church as well. We are a diverse people, but with a common purpose, I hope, to witness to God, to witness to our faith. And we are empowered by God to do great, good things. So I hope today, my prayer today is may we celebrate how the Holy Spirit draws us together, even in this group, in this RCA group. It's kind of cool to see all the different churches represented, right? May we celebrate the way that God draws us to go together, but also empowers us to be in the hands and the feet of Christ, to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world, to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release the prisoners. And for this, praise be to our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to join together in a time of prayer, and I do have a special prayer for Memorial Day to share with you as well. So let us be in a time of prayer. Will you pray with me? Holy God, we do thank you for this challenge, for the comfort, for the real assurance that is Pentecost. As we read that story, we recognize how... Uh, dynamic that story is. There's so many moving parts and so many lessons to be learned. We thank you for the gifts of your spirit and the ways that we can live those out in the world. We ask that you help us to be more humble, not for the glory of our own sake, but for the glory of God. That we might point all things back to you and the wonderful things that you were doing in our midst. We admit to you that we come to this place with a lot in our hearts and souls and minds. Things that are lifting us up, bringing us energy and joy and praise. Also things that are weighing us down and bringing us stress, anxiety and worry and fear. All of these emotions swirling inside of us, we bring to you today. We ask that you speak your truth and your love and your comfort and your peace to us. We give you a moment of silence as we turn to you those prayers that remain in our hearts. God, we thank you for the sounds of the wind. We thank you for the sounds of the birds and nature and all the ways that we experience you. We ask that you help us to operate in this world. We go through our weeks expecting to meet you, expecting to see and feel you in this world. On this Memorial Day weekend, we ask for your strength. That we might dedicate ourselves to perfecting your kingdom of peace and justice among all nations. We give you thanks for the many blessings of freedom which we possess, purchased at the cost of many lives and sacrifices. Fill us with the courage to fulfill our tasks, but to no way break with the fallen. We commend those fallen into your mercy and ask that we give them eternal rest. O God, whose days are numbered without end and whose mercies cannot be numbered, 
draw near to all who mourn the loss of those near and dear to them, especially those we name in our hearts. In the midst of their deep sorrow, grant them the comfort of your presence. Give them faith to feel the calm assurance of your mercy and know the blessing of your peace that passes all understanding. In your most holy name, we pray all these things. Amen. Uh, before we part, we do have a couple ice cream buckets. Uh, if you would like to provide an offering, this goes directly to the RCA, which promotes the things that, uh, the, the ministries that we do in this place. Our most recent thing was uh, to purchase Bibles for the graduating seniors and, and other like ministries. So I will, I don't know, do you want to pass these or... Sure, yeah. All right. I kind of fly by the seat of my pants. Just leave the pasture, that's fine. And our band is going to sing one more song. Before that, I want to offer a, a benediction. And if you are here to share the meal, uh, we will pray over our food as well. Hey, Mark. Yeah. Oh. yeah. That's what I just got this week. A word from our sponsors. Can you use the mic so everybody can? <laughs> okay, so this week, um, as we start summer, we are also starting a vacation Bible school. And we're joining together as the Riverside Church Association to host the Bible school. It's going to be at the Open United Methodist Church this coming Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Thank you. 
silence you won't let go In the questions your truth will hold You're in love with me as true You are the peace in my troubles, Eva You are the peace in my troubles, Eva Oh, my God. 